Hello, welcome to another episode of the RPG and Go tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering collisions. We're going to be implementing static bounding box collisions that the player, enemies, and NPCs can collide with. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. For this, we have some really nice utilities built into Go that we can use, and they are all inside of the image library. Specifically, we're going to be making use of their rectangle struct. So let's go ahead and create a new field inside of our game struct, and I'm going to call this my colliders. And this is just going to be a slice of our image dot rectangle uh, colliders here. Next, let's go ahead and go to where we initialize our game struct and add in that new field. So colliders equals a new slice of image dot rectangle here. Now let's go ahead and create some initial ones for testing purposes. So I'm going to do image dot rect, which is a convenience function to create a new rectangle here. And now we have to provide four values, the x0, y0, x1, and y1. Now this is not to be confused with x, y width and height, as is common with other game frameworks. This is the top left coordinate and the bottom right coordinate. Remember that the x-axis is from left to right and the y-axis is from top to bottom. So I'm going to create a 16 by 16 tile where the top left is at position 100, 100. So I'm going to put 100, 100, and then 116 by 116 here. Now, in order to test this out, let's go ahead and add that logic inside of our game's update method here. Let's go ahead and go after we move our player and let's loop over the colliders and check for collisions. So let's do four underscore collider colon equals range g dot colliders and this will effectively loop over our rectangles here and then what we can do is we can use a built-in method for our collider so we'll say if collider dot overlaps and this will check if our collider overlaps with any other uh, rectangle now we actually don't have a rectangle for our player but we can very quickly create one inside of here by, by using that image dot rect function and then passing in g dot player dot x g dot player dot y here and then we want to repeat that again here so we'll say g dot player dot x and then we'll add 16 to it because our player is one tile wide and then we'll say g dot player dot y here and then again we will um, add 16 to it because our player is one tile tall Finally, let's actually add the body of our conditional here. So we'll say, um, if we do collide right now, what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and just print out um, that we are colliding. So I'll say print line, what player colliding with collider here. And I missed a parentheses, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and actually run the code with go run dot here. Let's find that, that hidden tile by going up here and we should get something around here somewhere. Oh, we found, oh, I found it here. So we have found it in this position right here. What you might've noticed is that it took me a while to find the tile and that's because our tiles are hidden. They're just data at this point. So why don't we make it easier on us when debugging and actually have a way to draw these tiles um, inside of our game. So for this, I'm going to go to our draw method here. So I'm gonna to go to draw here. And then after we draw all of our tiles, we want to then draw our colliders on top of them for debugging purposes. So so what I'll do is I'll go to the very end of my draw method here and again I'll loop over the colliders with four um, underscore collider colon equals range uh, g dot colliders and now we want to make use of one of ebit engine's extension packages which is the vector package and this comes with a function called stroke rect which will uh, allow us to draw a hollow rectangle to represent our colliders this takes in a number of different arguments the first one being the destination we want to draw to um, the second one being the x and then we have the y and the width and the height so you'll notice here that um, we can't just directly pass in a rectangle we have to actually convert it over two x, y width and height style rectangles here. And that's not that bad at all. Uh, we can just add in these arguments here. So I'm gonna put these all on new lines. I'm gonna add collider.min.x here. And then I'm gonna add collider.min.y here. And this will basically grab our top left coordinate. And then to get the width and the height, we can use collider.dx and we can use collider dot dy here now we still don't have all of the arguments satisfied uh, we need the stroke width here which we need the stroke width here which we can set to uh like 1.0 and then we need the color and i'm for this one i'm just going to make it red so i'm going to do color dot rgba here and then i'm going to say uh 255 0, 0, 55, um, and then i'm going to put a comma at the end there and then there's one final one which is anti-aliasing and i'm going to put true for that because i don't i don't know why not 
go ahead and save this and I'm gonna do some formatting to make this look better here. And there you go, we should be good to go. And what you'll see is that we have our collider right here. But the problem is that when we move around and we use the camera, it is not being affected by our camera, which is a big issue. So the solution to this is actually very, very simple. We just need to add the camera's position to the X and the Y provided in the stroke rec function call. So go to where you're adding your X and then say, you know, uh, plus G dot cam dot X here. And then for the Y, we can add G dot cam dot Y. Save it and then go back to the file. Let's do go run dot again. And now if we move around with the camera, you'll see that the rectangle stays in its actual position. So if we go over to this collider here, you'll see that we have player colliding with collider. Cool stuff. But if we have these colliders, it's pretty lame if they're not actually solid. So let's go ahead and make it so that when we hit this box, it will actually keep us from walking through it. And in order to do this, we have to kind of redo how we're doing our player's movement. And the reason is because we need to be able to keep track of the velocity for our player so that we have an easier time actually reversing its movement when we actually hit a solid surface. And so in order to do this, let's go to our player file and let's add a new field to it. So I'm gonna actually add this, uh, the velocity fields to all of our sprites because I think that all of them will have velocity at some point. So let's go ahead and go to our sprite here and let's add some new fields. So I'm just going to append to the X and the Y. I'm going to put DX and dy dx of course meaning the change in x and dy meaning the change in y so delta x delta y now what we can do is go to our main.go here and let's change up how we are moving the player if we go to our update method here instead of directly updating the player's uh, x value here we can actually update its velocity so i'm going to say that the dx is going to be equal to negative two and uh, for here i'm going to say that the um, dy or the dx here is going to be equal to 2 and then for this one I'm going to say that dy is going to be equal to negative 2 and then for this one here I'm going to say that dy is equal to 2 here. Now if we were to run this as is we're going to see that the player no longer moves and that's because we now have to apply the velocity of the player to the player's position every single frame. So what I'm going to do is after all of these this input code I'm going to add some new stuff and I'm going to say g.player.x and then I'm going to say plus equals g.player.dx here. Let's go ahead and just copy this line down and then change this from an X to a Y and let's change this from a DX to a DY here. Now there is one problem with this and that is that whenever we move around now, we keep on moving in the same direction and we don't immediately stop whenever we let go of the key. Now there's a very easy fix for this and that's, that's just to simply set the velocity back to zero at the beginning of every frame. So I'll say g.player.dx equals 0.0, .0 and I'll copy this line down and and say that dy is also equal to zero. And now you should see that our movement is back to how it was before. Now that we've gotten the prerequisites done, let's go ahead and make this collision solid. Now, in order to do that, we have to separate collisions into the two axes, x and y. And the reason is because if you were to collide with a tile at its corner, like perfectly at its corner, and you were to resolve the collisions for the x-axis and the y-axis at the exact same time, it's gonna freak out and you're just going to kind of teleport somewhere random. You, easiest way to fix this is to simply have two passes for collisions. One, you apply the X velocity for all of your sprites and then you check collisions for them and then you apply their Y velocity and check collisions for them all over again. It sounds kind of unnecessary to be looping over all your colliders twice but it is the most common way to do this in 2D games and it is actually pretty darn efficient. So let's go ahead and do this. What we now need to do is we need to essentially just go over here and let's go ahead and implement the Y collisions first. So I'm going to say, instead of just printing here, I'm going to have a check and I'm going to say if g.player dot dy is greater than 0.0 that means that we are going down and if we're going down what we want to do is we want to reassign the player's y position to the top of the tile minus the player's height so we'll say g dot player dot y equals and then we'll say collider dot min dot x minus and then we need the player's height which is which we're treating as 16.0 for right now otherwise we can say else if g dot 
player.dy is less than 0.0, that means that we are moving up. And if we're moving up, then we want to reassign the uh, player's y position to the bottom of the tile. So we'll say g.player.y is equal to collider.max. Dot y. And now if we go up to our collider and run up against it, you'll see that we can no longer pass by it. And same thing for the bottom as well. But now we need to implement horizontal collisions. Now horizontal collisions are extremely simple now that we have the vertical ones done. Let's just go ahead and copy all of that code and let's go between where we move our players X and move the Y and paste in this code again. Now instead of having DY here, we're going to have DX and instead of having Y here, we're going to have X and instead of min.x here. Oh, and I just realized that there was an issue here. This shouldn't be min X this should actually be min y and proceeding onward let's go ahead and just translate all of these things from y to x capital x and then our capital x here and let's check that horizontal collision well there you go seems like we have all four sides of the collisions working. Now, what we wanna do is we want to have our enemies and our NPCs also abide by these collision restraints, um, but we don't wanna be repeating this code for all of them. So I propose that we put, pull this out into some functions. So I'm just gonna create uh, two simple functions here. I'm gonna say uh, func, and I'm gonna say check collisions horizontal here. And this is going to take in a target sprite, so a sprite here, and then it's going to take in the colliders, which is going to be a slice of image rectangles here. And so what we should be able to do is just copy over our horizontal collision code and go up to that new function and paste it in there. So like this, and now we just need to remove the G because we're no longer in the game class and then change this from player to sprite here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to use a Vim shortcut for this and that should be all good in that regard. So now let's go ahead and see if we can just drag and drop this into where we were previously using the code inside of our update function. So let's go back to that update function. And then I'm going to replace this code that we just wrote with the check collisions horizontal. And I'm going to pass in the g.player.sprite and I'm gonna pass in the colliders here. Let's go ahead and see if this is a nice drag and drop solution. So I'll say go run dot. And now we can go up to here and let's try out those horizontal collisions. Looks like everything works as normal. Let's go ahead and create the vertical version now. Okay, now it's all done. Let's go back to our update method here and let's swap out again. Let's swap out that code inside of our update method for the check collisions vertical function call here. Pass in the player sprite and then pass in the colliders here and we should be good to go. So just to make sure, let's go back there and test it. And the vertical collisions work as, and it seems like the going up collisions don't work. So I made some sort of typo. This is why you always test your code. So I'm going to go to that function definition here and let's see what the uh, issue is. I forgot to change this dx to dy, so that should all be good now. So now that we've pulled this code into functions, we can very, very easily just use this for all of our enemies as well. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to convert this to the enemies to also use velocity, which is why it's great that we gave them this velocity fields and not just the player. So whenever we're doing plus equals one here for all the sprites, um, I'm actually going to change that to uh, DX. I'm gonna change this to DX as well. And then I'm going to change this to dy. And then I'm going to change this to dy here. And remember that we need to set the velocity every frame. So I'll say sprite.dx equals zero. And I'll say sprite.dy equals zero. And then after this, let's say sprite.x plus equals sprite.dx and copy that line down and then change this to y and dy. And then let's add those two function calls. So I'll say check collision horizontal, pass in that uh, sprite here. So sprite.sprite and g.colliders. And then let's add in the check collisions vertical, add in that sprite.sprite and g colliders here and all should be good let's go ahead and move around this collider and see if we can catch it off guard here so as you can see um, it's kind of hard to tell but the uh, skeleton here is actually abiding by the collider it's not actually going through it so it was that easy to add a collider to both uh, our player and our enemies 
Okay, so I think that's enough for today's video. Uh, just to recap, we added static colliders and we got them working with our player and our enemies. And this is a great foundation for future videos where we will add colliders of all different shapes and sizes for our entire map. Uh, with that being said, uh, thank you very much for watching. I highly recommend that you join my Discord. It's a great community with lots of other game developers that will help you out in your journey as well as myself. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.